Good morning, friends. Happy day to all of you. Republicans and Democrats are finally taking action for the American people. Millions of low-income and middle-income households can expect to receive a boost in monthly benefits very soon. Thanks to new changes that are being made in Congress. Friends, please make sure you watch until the end of this video for all of these details. To say thank you for watching and joining me here every day, I'm giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Friends, please make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Mr. Speaker, it's no wonder the American people believe that Washington is out of touch. Last week, President Biden held an event on the White House lawn to celebrate the so-called, quote, Inflation Reduction Act, end quote. He took a victory lap in front of the entire country alongside his allies on live television. But do you know who was not celebrating with President Biden? Hard-working taxpayers and their families who are being pummeled by the president's inflation catastrophe and inflation tax. That same day, new numbers were released showing that inflation continues to surge. Mr. Speaker, President Biden couldn't read a room if he tried. The rising cost of goods and services will cost the average American household over $700 a month. When added up, that's over $8,000 that they'll be forced to fork out in a year. Grocery prices are up 13.5%. Food prices are up 11.4% since last year. This is the largest one-year increase in prices since 1979. Mr. Speaker, anyone who believes that these numbers are worth celebrating needs a serious reality check. The Biden administration's fiscal irresponsibility put us in this mess, and come November, Republicans will be the ones to fix it. Here is some big news, friends. According to Governor Kathy Hochul, New York residents who are enrolled in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program will receive a supplemental allotment in September, totaling about $234 million in federal funding. Kathy Hochul stated that emergency assistance supplement will be provided to all New York households who currently receive SNAP benefits. These include households that ordinarily receive the maximum allowed benefit per month. Households already near or at the maximum benefit level, which is $835 for a household of four, will receive a supplemental payment of at least $95. SNAP is a federal program that provides food assistance to low-income families. SNAP households in every county outside of New York City should see the extra benefits post through Monday, September 26. The New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance began issuing the emergency supplemental benefits in April 2020 to SNAP households receiving less than the maximum monthly benefit amount. As Governor Hochul noted, New Yorkers continue to rely heavily on SNAP benefits over the summer. More than 1.6 million households throughout the state enrolled in the program in July. While that figure was little changed from the previous month, it was up 3% from July 2021. Governor David Ige of Hawaii has also signed a fourth emergency proclamation allowing the SNAP program emergency allotment benefits to continue in the state in line with the federal crisis emergency. The proclamation extends the disaster emergency relief period to November 18, 2022. Governor Ige said in a news release, food insecurity is just one of the lingering effects of the crisis and SNAP benefits provide Hawaii families with nutritious food. It is important to families to reach out so they can get the help they need. Governor David Ige has extended the emergency proclamation several times in March, May, and July due to a continued need for families in Hawaii to receive SNAP benefits since the start of the crisis. Millions of families continue to suffer from food insecurity due to the effects of the crisis, coupled with a continued increase in the cost of daily living 
including groceries, transportation, child care, and utility costs as record inflation rates climb along with unprecedented gas prices. So friends, do you agree with me that all states need to increase their SNAP benefits? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Friends, the keyword for this video is Violet Lake. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Violet Lake and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And friends, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Some California residents will see lower prices at the pump in October. But the California Department of Finance said not all drivers will benefit from the sales tax pause. State leaders debated implementing some form of gas relief for months earlier this year. Those talks turned eventually into middle class tax refunds, a direct payment of up to $1,050 that will start to be distributed next month, though some may not receive their money until as late as January 2023. Originally, Governor Gavin Newsom wanted to send money directly to motorists with registered vehicles, while some members of the legislature wanted to pause state taxes on gas. Then when the details of the state budget were released, most Californians learned that they would be receiving a tax refund, regardless of whether they had a car or not. But still, there is some fuel price relief on the way for a limited number of drivers in the state. The state budget that was passed included a one-year pause on the sales tax for diesel, which the California Department of Finance said will most directly benefit businesses. Many Californians are looking forward to the direct deposits called inflation relief payments by state leaders. It will start to go out next month. In order to be eligible for the middle class tax refund, residents must have filed state taxes for 2020 by October 2021. Payments will range between $200 to $1,050, depending on how much recipients make and if they have any dependents. Single filers who earn more than $250,000 or joint filers who make more than $500,000 a year will not qualify. Well, my amazing and great friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this morning. Thank you, my friends, for joining me here every single day. I greatly appreciate all of you who are watching my videos every day. To say thank you, I'll be announcing a winner for the Walmart gift card giveaway. So please stay tuned for that video. Thank you, my friends, and have a wonderful and blessed morning. The, uh, they are gathering at the White House later today to crow about 8.3% year-over-year increase in inflation, like that's some sort of victory. Um, and I just would remind people that uh, when President Biden took office in January of 2021, the inflation rate was 1.4%. So the, um, they may be taking a victory lap at the White House, but I can tell you one thing, the American people are not, because they are feeling the direct impact of this every single day. What this report also showed was that the price of food and groceries has gone up 13.5% year over year, the highest rate of increase since 1979 back when I was a senior in high school. And as Roy Blunt has pointed out, the real rate of inflation, if you go back to January of 2021 to roll forward to today, isn't 8.3%, it's 13.2%. These numbers are staggering. And the White House seems to be just an absolute denial of what impact this is having on the American people and their, and their budgets. And I see it in, in agriculture. Um, one of the reasons, obviously, that food is increased at the grocery store, too, is because inputs for American agriculture have increased dramatically. In fact, this year will be the record year in terms of gross farm receipts. In other words, top line revenues in agriculture, highest ever. 14% increase over last year, and yet they're going to show an inflation-adjusted net farm income reduction of 1%. Highest cash receipts ever, historically, and yet a reduction in inflation-adjusted inflation uh, cash income. And that's why when you look at the cost of fertilizer since 2020, it's gone up 84%. Cost of fuel and oil has gone up uh, 35%. 
uh, since 2020. You look at these uh, increases and what it costs to produce a crop this year, and you can see why all these throughout the entire food chain, the impact inflation is having ultimately felt by the American consumer and the American family who are paying for these much higher prices at the grocery store. This is an example, again, of just the complete um, split screen you see in this country between the White House, uh, you know, celebrating, taking the victory lap down there this afternoon, and the American people dealing with the reality left by the policies of this administration who still don't get it. They continue to celebrate the tax increases, the amount of spending they're doing, and inflation continues to choke the American people. One parent shopping for school supplies recently told reporters, I had to start early because the prices were so high. Being a parent, I wanted to give them the world. Sometimes I wish I could give them more. But the back-to-school rush isn't the only headache facing working families. Since President Biden and this all-democratic government took office, prices on grocery store essentials from meat to produce have seen double-digit percentage increases. Some household items like furniture are over 20 percent more expensive than they were on Inauguration Day. The diesel fuel that moves practically everything through the supply chain and onto store shelves is up nearly 80 percent since President Biden put his hand on the Bible. Households' electric bills are up an average of 20 percent since January of 2021. Commuting and running errands cost more with gasoline up 70 percent. And as fall and winter approach, homes that burn fuel oil are set to be more than 75 percent more